Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for this webinar on the do's and don'ts of case writing, how to win a case competition. Um, my name is Melissa Close. I am the Cases Commissioning Lead at Emerald Publishing. I'm based in Boston in the United States, um, and I am going to introduce our session today. So I will briefly show my screen um, to take you through just a bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, so to begin with the housekeeping, um, please note that Emerald uses GoToWebinar for this session. Um, you can find a couple of things in the control panel um, that will hopefully be on the side of your screen. Um, the orange arrow will open and close this if you want to check on anything. Um, and you can also change the audio option to computer or phone um, if you are having any difficulties or if you just want to change your preference. Um, please note that all attendees will be muted for this session. Um, however, you can use the questions tab to submit anything you would like to ask to our panelists, and we do encourage you to do so um, because we will have a 15-minute Q&A at the end of the session with Virginia Borlika. Um, and with that being said, the session will be recorded and shared on our channels after this session, and it will be emailed out to you. You are more than welcome to share this recording with any colleagues who might be interested in the subject or anyone you think might be of use to. Um, so hopefully that will explain the functionality of the platform. Um, and I'll talk briefly about the agenda for today. Um, so first, I'm going to introduce the publication that this webinar is in partnership with, the Emerging Markets Case Studies Collection. Um, we have a couple of upcoming opportunities that you might be interested in participating in, such as competitions. Um, and then I will also introduce our main speaker, Professor Virginia Bodalika, for her presentation, followed by the Q&A session. So, um, let's talk briefly about publishing with the Emerging Markets Case Studies Collection, just to provide a little bit of context for the presentation you are going to hear about writing case studies. Um, if you leave this presentation very motivated to write um, and you do complete a case study, EMCS would be more than happy to consider your submission. Um, and to help you make that decision, I provided just a little bit of information on who we are and what we do. So EMCS is a publisher of discussion-based teaching case studies that offers students the opportunity to explore real-world challenges in the classroom environment. It is our hope that by highlighting the perspective of emerging markets, which is typically um, underrepresented, but very unique um, and very nuanced, that we will allow these students to make um, advancements in their skills and to develop these core abilities before taking their knowledge into the workplace. And we do consider it important to publish as many perspectives as possible um, in our mission to highlight emerging markets. Um, EMCS is a Scopus indexed publication. Um, and as such, we are double blind peer reviewed. So when you submit with us, you can expect a very rigorous um, process then you will receive high quality feedback from our reviewers and also our associate editors. We do offer payment upon publication um, and we have a truly international board and authorship to align with our mission as a publication. Um, we have competitive acceptance rates at EMCS. I believe this year so far we're about at 30% acceptance rate and we try to provide all authors with the first decision within 90 days. And if you're interested in finding out more about EMCS, um, you're very welcome to visit our author guidelines, which I have linked um, at the bottom of this slide. So um, just a couple more slides for me and then I will be handing over to Virginia. Um, so we have a number of resources available if you leave this presentation and find you want to um, see some more guides on how to write. So the first one is a guide to writing a teach case itself. Um, this will share all of the main sections that are involved in a case study um, and give you some tips and tricks on what to incorporate and how to do that. Um, we also have a teaching note template specifically for EMCS. So this will allow you to um, have something to work off of where you can pop your words into the template um, and know that you're working in the right format. 
And then we also have the Emerald Cases Hub. So this is a completely free online platform that provides a variety of courses, um, such as on writing a case study, teaching with case studies, um, and even learning with case studies. So whether you are a student or an instructor looking to become um, more familiar with the case method, um, this is a great end-to-end -end guide that has been developed by case experts. Um, and in it, you will find a number of helpful videos, infographics, um, and also, a number of courses that you can test your knowledge of, of what you've gained over the course of interacting with this platform. Um, so you can register for free and go at your own pace um, and explore whatever courses or topics interest you in particular. Um, you will also find a number of helpful resources such as sample cases if you go on the hub as well. One other resource is the Compact Guide to Writing Compact Cases. Um, so if you are working in the compact format, um, which we, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to jump forward there. Um, if you are working in the compact format, um, this is a case that is typically between 1,000 and 3,000 words. This is a great way to start. Um, it includes annotated cases, examples of published cases, helpful checklists, roadmaps, writing prompts, and more. Um, and this one is not free, so it is available for purchase on our bookstore. And lastly, those upcoming opportunities that I mentioned with EMCS. Um, so this webinar was organized in partnership with EMCS and our partners through these competitions. Um, so the first one I should mention is the AABS Emerald Case Competition. Um, this is highlighting the contributions of authors from African higher education institutions, and the submission deadline is September 30th of this year. Um, and we do provide prizes to our winning cases. And this year, we are very excited to have a brand new category for French submissions. Um, so if you are, not wishing to write in English and write in French instead, uh, we encourage you to take advantage of this new pipeline. Um, we also have the AUC School of Business and the Emerald Best Case Award. So this is open to authors from the Middle East and North Africa, uh, as well as Pakistan and Turkey. And this submission deadline will be October 17th of 2023. And we will provide a $1,000 prize to the winning case. And lastly, um, for authors who are based in India, we have another brand new competition, which is the EMCS TLC and MDI India Compact Case Competition. So this is open to authors from Indian higher education institutions, um, and it must be compact cases. So those cases between one to 3,000 words. Um, the submission deadline for this competition is de December 31st of this year, um, and we will likewise provide prizes to our top case studies. So with that being said, um, I am going to introduce our main speaker for this session. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen to do it um, just so we can hopefully see Virginia come back on screen. Uh, so welcome, Virginia. Thanks for joining us. Um, so Virginia Bodolika is the Said T. Cowrie Chair, I hope I pronounced that right, of Leadership Studies at the School of Business Administration at the American University of Sharjah. Um, Virginia has been the judge for the Emerald AUC case writing competition for three years now and is also an associate editor of the Emerging Markets Case Studies Journal. Um, and I've seen Virginia's presentation in the past and I can promise that you are in for a very informative session. So with that being said, um, Virginia, I will pass the presentership over to you, um, or if you want to send me your slides, I can still present for you. But uh, let's give this a go. Thank you so much, Melissa. I guess uh, open system preferences, I guess I can do that. Um, so I'm showing that. Stop showing the screen. So give me a second. Mm -hmm. So I guess because my IT person is here and uh, he promised I can do that. But see. Okay, sorry guys, I'll catch up, making sure that everything is fine. No worries, it's always helpful to have 
the IT team. Wouldn't know what I'd do without them. Okay. As always, when you need IT, they're not there. So Melissa, let me send you the, uh, maybe this doesn't work. Do you see? No, not yet. Uh, I do not see it yet. You don't see it yet. Uh, okay. Um, uh, I guess he did it. Okay, so let's try then, Melissa. I'm going to send it to you uh, via mail. Sorry about this delay. Really extremely sorry. I'll make sure it's uh, everything uh, sent on time. So I'm sending you now so that you can um, control it from there. Mm -hmm. um, so here's my... Uh, And here are slides. They're going. They should be should be receiving them now, okay. so that it's um, good. Yeah. One to you. Over to you. So the one minute delay. Sorry, guys. We'll catch up. Make sure everything is fine, and we will not delay you for sure more than uh, than the remaining forty five minutes. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you got there. Yeah, I'm just waiting for them to come through. Mm -hmm. They should be there. We'll be talking about all those important aspects. I did send, let me refresh, it's there, sent, should be there. Because it's always easier to control from here, but I don't know why it is blocked. I'm going to try. No, that's organizing. I'm still trying from here, trying my best to, to share. <laughs> but you. there should be something in my laptop uh, preferences from the university that is blocked, mm -hmm. even though yeah. IT. Did you get, did okay. you get them? I just received them, yeah. so I'm opening them up. Um, just bear with me for one second. And I will share my screen. I'm going to take the presentership back, show my screen. Um, and hit present perfect. on that. So if you can see that, go ahead and get started. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much, Melissa. And thank you everyone who is there. And we are extremely sorry. I personally am extremely sorry for this delay. So here we are back on uh, the competition. So as Melissa said, I am going to be the judge of the competition. I've been in it for several times. So it's an amazing collaboration that Emerald Hearst with several business schools in the world, but particularly uh, in this case, uh, the AUC competition um, with the Kazandar Business uh, um, um, Research and Case Center. Um, so this uh, competition, as uh, Melissa mentioned, the deadline is going to be in October. So everybody is really encouraged to submit. Um, my role here is to share the tips on how to win uh, a case competition. Um, I've been uh, the associate editor for the journal Emerald uh, Emerging Market Collection since a long time. I did write cases myself. I did win several competitions too, so I can share my perspective from um, a point of view of an editor, of a judge, and of a uh, writer. Right, so I, I guess by combining all those perspectives together, you can benefit from, from this knowledge and hopefully we'll see all your submissions for this round of uh, competition. So Melissa, if we can go to the next slide, please. I do always like when I talk about competitions and about case writing, being an academic, being a scholar and uh, being required to publish a lot of research, I always, um, managed to meet several uh, researchers and scholars who are a bit, uh, I would say, sceptical. Um, when we have a lot of these uh, requirements of publishing scientific research, why would I spend a lot of time in publishing or writing first and then publishing case studies, pedagogical case studies? And here I come always with this preamble uh, to the discussion about why the case studies are needed. And all the time, and I would like to emphasize that several times, given that in the region we don't yet have such a well-developed capacity for pedagogical case writing, so I always emphasize that need for um, making the differentiation between what is the 
qualitative research-based case study and what is the pedagogical or teaching case studies. Uh, those are completely different types of case studies. And here I re-emphasize again that we're talking about pedagogical or teaching case studies. So why those case studies are needed? Why do we need to do as academics, as scholars, to, to, to do those case studies, uh, research and then publish those case studies that are then useful for different um, purposes? So here you can see on the screen uh, why this is needed. First of all, yes, it is about pedagogy. So if we're going to write our own case studies, our cases are going to be the key tool that we're going to use in our classes. Our classes are going to become more engaging, more relevant, and more interesting to students, right? So better pedagogy is the key um, objective of the pedagogical case studies. It is also about curiosity. As researchers, we do like to write about the reality around uh, us. So to explore the world, we do dig into the practical realities of the organizations that surround us, right? As business scholars in particular, management scholars, we do go and we explore that world. So find out what the practitioners are doing and to what extent this relates to what we are teaching in the classroom is a venue through the case study that we can achieve, right? Uh, another thing is to build a knowledge base, to share and to disseminate the knowledge about the organizations around the world. If we are located in the Middle East, for instance, it's very interesting for us to be able to disseminate that knowledge to other people in other regions of the world, because they are not located in that region and they may have a limited knowledge about the specificity, the culture, the business principles, the laws of a specific region of the world. Um, I would say that through those case studies, you can also influence uh, the way how management and how the practice evolves. So you write those relevant case studies, but you also try to make a difference by sharing and disseminating that knowledge. Um, I would say that, particularly now that we're talking about the competition, I would say that you can also um, succeed in winning a case competition and then publish a case uh, pedagogical case in a journal. There are several journals that Emerald is publishing, but as an associate editor of Emerald Emerging Markets Case Study Collection, I would love to see your cases uh, submitted to EMCS. So to proceed, um, we will now focus in particular on the most important tips uh, in terms of uh, case writing, uh, in terms of some writing techniques, and given that the title of the webinar is to um, understand how to win a case competition, so we'll see, and I'll conclude my presentation with some do's and don'ts. So things that we must do, we have to pay a particular attention to, and the don'ts, uh, what we have to really avoid. So before I proceed, it's very important to keep in mind who a pedagogical case study actually involve? Who? To whom do we address a case study? And obviously, there are a lot of stakeholders. And Melissa, if you can animate till the end, right, you'll see stakeholders and just put all the, all the players around. If you just press the next uh, buttons. Yes, we have more, a bit more, a bit more. That's it, that's it. Okay, perfect. So what is important to keep in mind, of course, when we develop a case study, we have a set of stakeholders with whom we have to deal and to whom we have to address, address our case. Obviously, the most important stakeholders for us when we write a case like that are the students, right? Those are the targets and those are the people we have to keep in mind when we write a case because the case has to be relevant, the case has to be engaging and the case has to convey something in practical terms uh, that will be related to the content of the course that we deliver to the classroom. Now we are talking also about the publication of the case. We are talking also about winning a competition in case writing competition. And obviously in this situation, we'll have more than just students. And it is very important to keep in mind the requirements of those additional stakeholders, right? When we write a very engaging and relevant case study. Of course, there are people um, who are protagonists on whom we are writing that story. 
So it's kind of a research that we are also doing when we are doing with our scientific articles. Uh, the same thing we are doing with case studies because we are not writing fictional stories, we are writing about the reality. So we'll have to engage our protagonists, our decision makers, our managers who are going to share their perspectives on the problems that they face in their organizations. So protagonists are there. Of course, ourselves, we, with our knowledge and skills and the practice of writing. The more we write, the better we become and more successful we become in publishing and even winning the case competitions. Of course, the editors of the journals, the anonymous reviewers who are going to give us feedback on the case study. Of course, the peers who can read, more experienced peers who can read our case studies and give us feedback. And the judges, judges who are involved in case writing competitions. If we keep in mind all those different stakeholders, we can understand what are their requirements and then we can put all those requirements in a piece of a case study and teaching note in order to be able to win a case writing competition. Let's go to the key essential of a pedagogical case study. Melissa, please, the next slide. Um, okay, so we have here the most important consideration. Yes, a pedagogical case study, and you can click the three boxes here three times one more that's it okay on one side we do have a teaching pedagogical case study so this is one document that we are going again it is a pedagogical tool it's a pedagogical case study it is not sufficient because this is a case study that is going to be addressed to students students are going to read and then they are going to solve some specific dilemmas, problems, some issues that the company managers are facing or decision makers and corporations are facing. Now, on the other side, we need to help instructors or professors who would like to use our case in their own teaching, right? Because they didn't develop your case, they didn't write your case, they need some support to understand in which courses uh, this case is appropriate. What kind of questions we can ask to students uh, on those uh, on those uh, on this case in particular? Uh, what kind of theories um, concepts from a specific course this case allows to reinforce, and so on and so forth. So we need, and this is our responsibility, to write a detailed teaching note, or in other cases, it is also called instructor's manual. Right? And this part of the document is not going to be shared with students and this document is going to provide a lot of details about how to use that case in the classroom. So on the left hand side we have the case study which is addressing the students. On the right hand side we have instructor uh, teaching note which addresses instructors. By combining those two we have two documents and those two documents are going to be required for submission to a journal or to a competition in order to result in a winning and a publishable teaching case study. So let's go to see in the next slide. Okay, till then I have animations there, but given the webinar, so it's unidirectional, click till then, so just in one shot, one more, okay, to present what the teaching case study is. And I always re-emphasize, because still we do sometimes have submissions um, of qualitative research-based case study, which are scientific articles with literature review, with uh, propositions sometimes, with some models written in that specific document. No, this is not what we are looking for. We are looking for teaching case studies. So it, the teaching case study is not a research case study in qualitative terms that we are publishing in academic scientific journals, right? It is a pedagogical case study which writes a relevant and engaging story about the issues that practitioners are facing in the workplace. Obviously, the case has to be written in a way that it does not lead to only one right answer, and per se, the case does not really have a right answer. The whole thing and the artistry of your writing, that story about the issues and problems and dilemma in the workplace that the managers are facing, is that uh, 
it has to be written in a way that it opens up to a variety of possibilities and where the students will discuss those different possibilities and then they'll um, justify the solutions that they propose uh, to the specific issues that managers are facing in the workplace, right? So there is no right answer per se, but the discussion that is gonna be built in the classroom is the real rich aspect of the case itself. Next one, it's very important in next slide, we're gonna see, it's very important to understand uh, which cases, and let's click till then, so this will give us an idea about how to write the cases, one more, perfect, to understand how to write the cases in order to make them compelling, relevant, interesting to students, but also winning and publishable case studies. So I formulated those slides in the form of a question and I'm asking, what type of cases do you think are preferred? If you are embracing any of those stakeholders that I, I've seen before um, and I've, I've shown you before on the screen and you are taking their perspective, you would see that most uh, of those stakeholders will answer the same way to the questions that I'm, uh, that I'm asking here. So, for instance, uh, which of the cases would be preferred? The ones which are writing about success stories, how beautiful and successful a given company is, and how amazing the decisions uh, of, a, of managers were to just report on that success, or cases which are talking about problems, challenges, and they're problematic, and there are problems that need to be addressed. Obviously, it's about writing something intriguing, something that will challenge the students, and that's why everybody will prefer more problematic, problem-based, dilemma-based case study rather than reporting a success story, right? So, because problematic cases will um, generate curiosity, will uh, challenge the students and uh, people who are there addressing the, the issues that managers are facing and propose their own solution to that. Cases which ask for action and decision or the ones who are just uh, reporting a story. Of course, the cases which ask for decision. Cases which are based on field work and public level or public only publicly available sources. Obviously, if the cases are just based on publicly available sources, then people will say, what is the value added when you're writing that case, right? So you would use some secondary data which is publicly available like reports like uh, journal or newspapers uh, uh, articles or press releases on that company uh, of your case study but how you add to the specific intricate knowledge about that company in that dilemma from the view of protagonists uh, it's going to be through your field work through your interviews with protagonists and decision makers in the company Cases which are based on recent events or past events. While we can learn a lot from cases from 1980s and 90s, still students today in the classroom really would like to know more about the right here, right now, about the companies right now which are facing problems right now so that they can even compete with decision makers in the company and suggest their solutions and then see over time what happened with the story of the company in real time. Um, which report data or narrate? Cases typically are better when they narrate a story. So those are the type of cases which are preferred. Cases which are stories or histories? Of course, stories, not histories. Histories are going to be just dry report of data. This happened then at this date, and this makes the case very dry and not as interesting. Next slide, please, Melissa. Um, other type of cases, okay, which are long or short. Well, typically there should be appropriate balance, but as Melissa said, we also have a um, section on compact cases, and typically compact cases have, are not longer than 1,500 words, and in this situation you'll have literally just one learning objective that you can address through this case. But in general, 
the cases should be on a shorter side. Even if we are talking about normal, well-developed case studies, they shouldn't be really more than 10 pages in total because then students are overwhelmed and then they lose the concentration on the issue that happens in the, in the case. Which provide the relevant information or not? Of course, relevant. Which are on identifiable companies, real companies? Of course, real. Which are related to topics that you are teaching in, in your course? Of course, because your case is going to be embedded in a specific course and you would like to reinforce some concepts, some theories through that specific case. Cases which describe the quotes of protagonists or cases which provide some quotes. Of course, it's not going to be all the case uh, full of quotes, but you can play with variation by using some descriptions and some specific quotes from the interview that you had with your protagonist. And cases which are challenging, provocative or not, of course, the cases which are challenging and provocative. Okay. So let's see, the key advice, next slide, please. What are the great cases capturing? I always say that there are five Ps and there is a sixth one that I didn't put here on purpose because sixth one is going to be more specifically addressed to the judges of competition and to editors, associate editors of journals, which are receiving those case competition. So typically, great cases are capturing. And here you have the five Ps and the six I'll just mention at the end. Um, the problems, the protagonists, pieces, possibilities, and paradigms. So what does it mean, problems? I just told you that very interesting or appealing cases are the ones which are problematic. So ideally, your case should start with a problem, with a challenge, and typically it appears with, within the beginning, the first, and we call it opening paragraph. Within this opening paragraph, which can be one or two short paragraphs, you say right away, I always say metaphorically speaking, you throw the bomb. You catch really the attention of the student and you say, here's the company, here where it happens, here's the protagonist, uh, this is what is the problem. Typically, you would not understand a lot of things in this short paragraph, but you really hook the reader to try to read more and to understand that there is a problem, but how that problem happened, you'll read it later, right? So problems appear in the first, right at the beginning of the case. Protagonists, we are writing real cases about real companies and we would love to capture protagonist perspectives, their opinions, and we are going to even put some quotes from the interviews we had with them. So the voices of protagonists should be heard in the case. Pieces, we just said, the cases should be written in a way that they capture readers' attention so that they are not bored. If the case is on the longer side of five, six pages, it is very important that those pieces, meaning the stories, are written in a lively and engaging way. Possibilities, because we're talking about business cases, management cases, decision-making cases. They should be written in a way that they don't lead the discussion towards one solution. There should be a lot of possibilities for potential what outcomes, right? So possibilities are meaning or are referring to the fact that we have a lot of possible outcomes to solve the dilemma, and this will happen through the discussion, uh, through the discussion of the case. Paradigms, paradigms refer to um, theoretical concepts and um, backgrounds and theories that you would like to reinforce through your case. Paradigm will never be mentioned in the case study itself, but you have to keep in mind that you'll discuss that in your in the teaching note. So always the case is not written in the vacuum. It is related to a specific course and the case is used in order to reinforce some specific, specific theoretical concepts and paradigms through the case. And the last 6P that I didn't mention here, so it's not addressed to writers, I call it potential. Every single case, sometimes it is not very well developed till the end and all this, but in the way, in the topic, in the way how it is written and structured, or maybe it is about a very topical issue, the, the case actually has a lot of 
potential. So this potential is up to the judges of the competition, up to the editors to see, and then provide very constructive feedback to the authors so that they can improve. Let's go to the next slide and see what a case needs to include. So let's go to South animation so that we can cover everything. Okay, so first of all, we have a focus and that focus starts with the problem, the P of the problem, right? The challenge, the dilemma, which appears in the opening paragraph, always to hook the reader and to provoke the reader to read the case later on. But the problem, the challenge should start the case. And then after that, you have the core of the case, right? And in there, you provide background information, you write that story, you talk about the decision making, you write about the whole thing, how that evolved. And then you go back to close the loop by describing that focus towards the end again. So kind of relating back to the beginning of the case. The P of paradigm that I mentioned in the previous slide will never be mentioned in the teaching case, yet the P of paradigm is going to be developed more in where? In the teaching note. Okay, next slide, please. So here, I'll go over that. Melissa? Uh -huh. Yes. So here, uh, I'll go over it very quickly. Melissa talked about the resources that exist online. So here, I just wanted to give you a snapshot of um, resources that you can find online where you can understand what are the key considerations and major criteria when we look at a well-written case study. And here, it's exactly those ideas of the P's that I just told you. It's very important that we cover the problems through the perspectives of the protagonists, that we write in a way that it opens up to a variety of possibilities, that we also talk about that specific paradigm, right? And that the story is written through pieces in a very engaging way. Next slide, please. We have the teaching note. And the teaching note, okay, has a lot of sections and it has to be comprehensive and detailed. It includes the case synopsis, the target audience, learning objectives that you are going to achieve through your case, methods of data collection and analysis, even though it's not a qualitative research-based case study, but we still write how did we gather our data. Um, we described in detail the teaching plan and board, the theories that we would like uh, to reinforce through our case, then suggested reading for usage and preparation for the case, then we list all the discussion questions on the case, then we provide detailed sample answers, simple answers to those uh, questions, because there might be different answers, but you provide just a sample answer. And then epilogue. Epilogue means that you describe, if you know, uh, since you started to write the case, you collected the data, by the time it is already submitted for publication, um, several months can elapse. And in the epilogue, you can write what happened with the company in the meantime, since the beginning of your research and analysis, and by the time when you submitted to. Uh, to a case competition or to a journal. Next slide, please. So we have in the teaching plan, for instance, we have some details and those details in the teaching plan have to be broken in the following way. So we'll talk about the class time, how many minutes was spent, some assignments the students can perform on that in teamwork and presentation, oral analysis or written, or it can use, be used as an exam at the end of the term. So all those details have to be presented in the teaching plan. Next slide. It's very important to write uh, well-crafted learning objectives. And those learning objectives, I always suggest the authors to use Bloom's taxonomy because it's very important to use an appropriate verb to achieve the specific learning objective we have to do. List, recognize, summarize, classify, and obviously, if your course in which you're using this course, uh, this case is of a lower level, you will use lower level verbs like list, recognize, summarize. If your case is used in a high level course, like in an MBA uh, course, like in executive education um, seminar, then you'll use higher level um, verbs to achieve those objectives, like create, reflect, or design. Right? Okay, the next slide. We also have something that we can take uh, online from the online resources, the major criteria, how to assess whether a teaching note 
is a comprehensive and detailed. So there we will see, is this teaching note describing the target audience? Does it describe the teaching plan? Does it have the needed information for any instructor who would like to use your case in their own teaching to be able to then use in a specific course? And then all the questions that they might eventually have are addressed and described in that teaching note. Next slide. I would like here to already focus on the remaining few minutes. I would like to focus on my specific advice. So when we write the case and teaching note, there are a lot of very important aspects to consider. First of all, writing style. It is professional. Yes, sometimes the quotes are going to be casual, but the style of writing is professional, right? It is a piece that we are going to publish eventually, or at least we're going to distribute to our students in, in our classes, and they need to see the professional language that is being embedded in that piece of writing. It has to be structured, well structured, so it is easy to follow the logic of how the story evolved. There should be sections, subsections. The flow of idea, the connectivity between the different sections should be there. Consistency of idea, uh, not like contradicting yourself. In one section you write one thing, in another section you write a different number and all this, the dates are mixed up, it has to be consistent. Quality of the language, many times we have authors sending us, you know, uh, not copy edited uh, versions of, of, of their cases, and this turns down very much the appetite of reviewers to review the cases because it's very difficult to understand. So we highly recommend to copy edit, proofread by a professional proofreader the case before submitting that. It's very important. And then enhancing elements like charts, tables, everything that will support the students to make a relevant decision. Next slide, please. Some tips on writing techniques, right? I always say, and I encourage, please use catchy words for titles, heading, sometimes even some metaphorical language is very important. Try to select the loveliest and most relevant informant quotes. Don't overload the text with quotes, but select the most important ones and the most informative. Use paraphrasing skills in order to be able to transform some of the quotes in text. Use some metaphors. It's very interesting, it's lovely, and it gives some dynamism to the case. Alternate between different types of verbs and adjectives. Don't use the same verbs all the time. Ask someone else to read your case, and then that more experienced person can provide you some feedback on the case. Some additional tips in the next slide. For instance, I always say, write on timely and topical issues in the case, because this attracts even more attention. Are there issues about gender equality? Are there issues about sustainability? Are there issues about technology? Do that, right? Use cases as assignments in your courses. This is very important because like that, you can even use some sample answers from student assignments for your teaching notes. Uh, and students can write those answers. Keep the connection all the time between teaching note and case. Be as comprehensive as possible in the teaching note. There is no limitation on that because teaching note is not available to students. It is available upon demand to instructors who are going to use your case. Always try to write decision-based cases or problems-based cases because those are the most relevant and attractive to students and even to reviewers and to the journals. And try to protest your case in the, in the class before submitting it for competition, because like that you can improve it based on the feedback you get from the most important stakeholders, who are the students. Okay, for the submission. Next slide, please. Okay, so we will have four important files. Those are case study, teaching note, then two, Emerald is providing the templates, title page, and consent to publish. The protagonist should sign a consent to publish or a release form for you to be able to submit this case to for publication. And then optional files are uh, tables, figures, images, or third-party copyright permissions if you're using some third-party information, uh, which was already previously published, and you need permissions for that. Next slide, I would like to show you the template that Emerald provides for the title page. So you need to download this file, which exists there on the website that Melissa discussed, and you'll fill that out using the template. Next slide. 
we have the template for consent to publish. And that's something that you will give to your protagonist who will fill this, this information in and will sign the consent to publish, which you will submit when you submit that to the journal. Next slide. Okay, here I would like to conclude with uh, the few remaining minutes. I really would like to conclude with very important tips and advice. When you submit, please check the submission requirements on the website and just follow them to the letter. Pay attention to formatting of your files. Sometimes it's so messy, it's very difficult to make sense of what we are receiving. Quality of the language, again, proofread and use copy editors or professionals. Pay attention to detail, organize your files carefully, again, to avoid all this confusion. Do not forget to anonymize your submissions. Sometimes uh, um, uh, authors put their names in the teaching note and all this, and this compromises their anonymous peer review process. And always, I say, ask for feedback from peers before submission. Next slide, please. As Melissa mentioned, I'll go through that very fast. Here you have a lot of online resources, right? Okay. And then I have two more slides left to conclude with, just quickly, the writing tips in order to be able to win a case competition. What to do? And you see it is in green. And it is about using an engaging writing style, as I said, not to bother readers. Use catching and topical and timely cases on issues which are relevant and worth addressing, focus on decision-driven cases, try to pretest your case in the classroom so that you get valuable feedback, keep a connection between the case and teaching notes so they are both together and related to each other, focus on the teaching note. Many times we say the length of the teaching note is double the size of the case study. And then the dilemma, don't remember, there should be the mentioning of that dilemma or problem, both at the beginning, in the opening paragraph, and in the closure at the end of the case. So this is what you need to do. And then in the last slide, here what you don't have to do and have to not avoid, but not do at all. And this is in red, not do it. Do not use present tense in case writing. Cases are always written, always for everything in past tense. So this is religiously decisive that all the case, entirely case, not teaching, no, the case is written in, written in past tense. Do not write your case as if you're writing a qualitative research article. Those are two different stories. Do not rely only on secondary data. It's very difficult to publish and succeed with the secondary driven cases, uh, secondary data driven cases. So no, try to use as many, I would say 90% primary data and then add some information from publicly available sources. Do not use outdated material concepts. They are not as exciting for our students. Do not ignore the importance of the teaching note because they are important and many times I did win competition because my teaching note was extremely brilliant. The story was also interesting but the teaching note re-enhanced the value that the case had. Do not write information that does not add to the story. This is the reason. Sometimes cases become too, too long, but then you read one paragraph, second, third. How does this content help to the story? No. If it does not help to the story, delete, because it only creates the length without any substance. And do not focus on issues that are not worth solving, because those do not create interesting cases. So in the last slide, we have still some minutes to address, if any, questions at all, so that I can answer your questions. I would like to encourage you to write these studies. This is a fun experience. This is an amazing experience and believe your classroom becomes much more engaging and you as a researcher become much more, I would say, stronger and influential. So we are looking forward for your case submission to the competition. Melissa, over to you. Thank you so much for that presentation. That was incredibly helpful. Um, so 
like Virginia said, we have entered the Q&A portion of the session. So if you use the control panel, um, there is a questions tab that you can use to submit questions. Um, so I will give everyone just a minute to start sending those in. Um, and while we wait to see some come through, perhaps we can speak towards some of the most common questions that I've encountered from authors. Um, and I frequently find authors asking about the matter of consent and what to do if it's difficult to obtain consent or um, you need to disguise a case to receive consent. So could you speak to that a little bit? Yes, Melissa, that's, that's a very, very important question because it's a, it addresses the issue of ethics and our responsibility to actually do things as we are supposed to do, right? Ethically and meticulously. So, First, and I had from my own experience as a writer, uh, I had all, all different stories. You know, when you go and you um, um, search for information and then interview people and protagonists, the risk is that people who are not really in the, in, in the practice and organization are not very familiar with this, uh, they tend to kind of nudge the writer to write only the positives about the company uh, because they're afraid that their public image and reputation all this is going to be uh, affected. Those who are really um, like challenging, there are a lot of decision makers, managers, they believe in the value of education, all this, they said, no, right, obviously it's not about putting the bad light on the company, but you just from a neutral stance describe what happens and let them, the students or the ones who are reading the case to decide. Is it good? Is it bad? Never take sides as as a reader right as a writer sorry of the case so my recommendation is always is to have a good relationship with the protagonists of uh, of the uh, uh, of the story so that and you explain before starting the whole process and gathering data and writing and then end of the day uh, your protagonist is saying no i'm not going to sign that so please make sure that you explain very carefully what is the process that that it will go for publication for this and that that there is a release for that you're going to share the different uh, types of, of versions of the of the case and ideally even and i do that very often i share examples of the cases that were already uh, published before so that's one thing second if you god forbid uh, happens uh, to to not receive uh, then uh, the the um, the um, signature right and publication release form is not signed then you can disguise the case even though still there should be kind of evidence for the publishers and for us uh, editors to know that this case is not a fictitious case that this is a real case and this case uh, draws on real data right because again all the journals are publishing real case studies so that's why you can disguise and explain that to your protagonist who will then sign the form because there already you disguised by creating another name sometimes placing the company if it doesn't alter the content placing maybe in another city within the same country right this is another trick that you can do but with that you still inform the protagonist and protagonist then in a more comfortable way can sign that publication release form Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, we have had some questions come through now, um, including some requests for sample cases. Um, so I will say that we are happy to provide sample cases. So as a follow up to the session, um, I'll work with my colleague to send out a communication to everyone, including one of those samples. Um, another question we've received um, is that Melissa sorry to interrupt and then it's very important given that we talk about encouraging uh, people to submit for co case competition I would recommend to go over those because Emerald is doing an amazing job to inform um, it's on the website instead the previous editions of competition and then the winning cases go over the winning cases they are you know it, it gives you a lot of ideas about the topics the structure the way how it's written and it's very informative sorry to interrupt no, I agree. That is a great suggestion. Um, always good to know what's won in the past as a point of comparison. Um, so another question we've received from Evelyn um, is that in a case submission, if it is not successful, can it be resubmitted? Which is an uh, interesting one. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, okay. So. Uh, this if we talk about the competition then it's a little bit tricky because we do have uh, um, deadlines uh, and those are everywhere we have deadlines but in competition is is tricky because we have 
uh, harsher deadlines because we have to announce the winners and then everybody is eager to get those results and because there is uh, another round of competition for that. So we have to uh, really you know, uh, keep up with those deadlines. And even with that, Emerald is quite flexible in the past editions of competition. Emerald took one or two weeks to go over those submissions and rapidly, quickly inform the authors if you would like to change so you can, they can accept that. But it depends also on the speed of response of the authors. In the journal, if you submit to um, Emerald the Emerging Market Case Study Collection, for instance, so then it's it's much more flexible because there are no deadlines there unless you submit to a special issue we also have special issues uh, for cases for instance on middle east or technology cases or family business cases or french edition or spanish compact all this we have special issues so in there if you're not submitting to special issues so it's much more flexible we have uh, editorial assistant who is doing an amazing job in 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 the journal also and looks through all the files and Typically, the files are not, and the case, are not going to be sent to the associate editor who will handle the anonymous peer review with reviewers and all this, unless all the files correspond to the requirements. Typically, the editorial assistant will send back to the author by saying, look, um, the um, release form is not there. Or in your teaching note, you put your name, right? And I see that several times that it happens. Please anonymize your document. You did that for case, but you didn't do that for the teaching note. And it will go also to reviewers and they'll see, and then it compromises the anonymous peer review process. So yes, you can, it's not complete. The editorial assistant look at that, sends you back the email and it receives, it, it sent back to you so you can resubmit. Now, if you go through rounds of review, it works like exactly like for scientific articles. You go there, you receive feedback, uh, you receive one, two months uh, for you to revise that, you write a response letter, just like you do for other um, publications. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, okay, we've just got one minute left, so maybe we can squeeze in one more question. Um, one of the recommendations you shared is to not use exclusively secondary data. Um, why is that? Unfortunately, it is not always easy to get the company's consent for case study writing. That's it. You know why? Because, and uh, that's the typical challenge that uh, you'll, you'll have uh, and a question uh, that is going to be addressed by students. Why would I read your case when I can just go into business news, newspapers, and you have snapshot to read the business news and you have the industry reports? It's already published. What is your value added? right into that because if those are publicly available data everybody can read there but will never understand what went through the mind of the protagonist of the um, subjective meanings and ideas that they had how the challenges happened how they thought how did they arrive all these will be extracted from from the primary primary data through the interviews and the, the perspectives that protagonists will share i know it is challenging our job of Researchers is challenging, but if we talk about you want to win a competition, believe me, that's the only way to do that. Primary driven cases are juicier, more interesting, more compelling and relevant. Okay. Um, well, that's perfect timing because we've just hit the top of the hour, um, so we can start to wrap up here. Um, you can expect a recording of this session to arrive in your inbox within the next couple of days. We will also share um, the sample cases as well. Um, and on behalf of EMCS and Emeralds and myself, thank you so much for joining us. I wish you the best of luck um, if you're participating in any of these competitions. Um, and to close us out, Virginia, I'll toss it over to you if you want to say anything to wrap us up. Well, I'm excited as always. I am, as I, as I always say, uh, remember those five Ps and the sixth one, which is potential. So even if your cases are not super developed, please do try your luck. Please do submit. Sometimes they are not super, super developed, but through the potential that we might see, through the topic that you, uh, you tackle, through the problems and possibilities that you have there, you might be surprised. You might win the case competition. I'm looking forward to your submission and the best of luck. Fantastic. OK, thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you, Melissa. Bye bye. Good luck to everyone.